Welcome back to the most politics in the morning. Republican vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin took some heat this week for suggesting that there are parts of the country that are more, quote, pro-American than others. She later apologized. But we've seen this topic a lot recently. Last week, Minnesota Republican Congresswoman Michelle Bachman was under fire for her controversial comments to Chris Matthews. Let's listen. You believe that, that Barack Obama may, you're suspicious because of this relationship, may have anti-American views. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm very concerned that he may have anti-American views. Well, Bachman went on to say that the media should see if she would welcome the, the media looking at whether certain members of Congress were pro-American or anti-American. And yesterday she issued this apology. I want to be clear that I don't believe that Barack Obama is anti-American, nor did I say that he is anti-American. Um, also, I, I um, don't question Barack Obama's patriotism. Michelle Bachman is uh, up for re-election. Her congressional seat may now be up for grabs. And there's more. North Carolina Congressman Robin Hayes telling a crowd of McCain supporters last weekend, quote, folks, there's a real America and liberal liberals hate real Americans that work and accomplish and achieve and believe in God. Now, he also apologized, saying after reading it, there's no doubt that it came out completely the wrong way. That is definitely not what I intended. So is this a new GOP tactic, and could it work or could it backfire? Joining us now to talk about it is Republican strategist and CNN contributor Ed Rollins. Are these just sort of uh, people that, that the GOP in general wishes would keep quiet, or is this part of a larger strategy? I don't think it's part of a larger strategy. I think they all wish they would have been quiet. They're all three were forced to apologize and the congresswoman who would have sailed to election now has an opponent who has a million dollars raised in 24 hours against her. So you, you can't think out loud. You need to be very careful what you say, particularly whether there's a camera everywhere, whether it's a, a, an, an iPhone or whatever. So you have to be very careful what you say. And you can't attack people's patriotism in this country. So you, you think that, uh, that just by some of the comments that she made, that congressional seat is now uh, up for well, grabs? The, the instant ability to raise money when you've got a million people on an, on an email list who have contributed, and all you need to do is send one email out and there's a million dollars there, to, which is, makes your opponent a very competitive race. You also don't need to have a lot of money to be able to turn uh, the words of somebody else into a, really a commercial, uh, if you will, absolutely. and email and it and out. And the combination of Facebook the, and, and the combination of, of cable network. You can get these on cable network and, and have, have a big impact very quickly. Now, I want to ask you about this um, because we've just been talking about this. So Sarah Palin apologized, Bachman and Hayes did, but one Republican congressman hasn't yet, and that's Randy Cool of New York. And uh, this is what his Democratic opponent posted on the web. Let's look. I firmly believe that the Democratic majority wants the American public to suffer and to hurt so that they can make some political gains at uh, election time. And I think that's wrong. It's an absurd statement. Uh, I mean, no offense to the congressman, but, uh, it, you know, he would have been better to argue what the Democrats want to do. They want to raise your taxes. They want to spend more money. Uh, uh, but uh, the idea that one party in, the, in this country wants to hurt the country is just not is not realistic. And there's a backfire. To no, no, no.